even as a child Trump was a horror, throwing stones at a toddler in a playpen. Boasting he gave his teacher a black eye. Think the president's a bully now? You should have seen him as a boy. A pint-sized bully who loved to pull girls' hair and once lobbed rocks at a toddler in his playpen. A loud-mouthed classroom know-all who could never admit he was wrong and boasted of giving the music teacher a black eye. And a sporting show-off who yearned to hear the crowd's applause. But who would smash his baseball bat in fury if he didn't win? Arrogant, overbearing, thin-skinned, determined, and not exactly great with the ladies, does this portrait of a child growing up in 50s suburban New York sound like a certain grown-up, well, sort of grown-up, currently strutting the world stage? It was Aristotle who said give me the child until he's seven and I will show you the man, and Donald Trump, now 70, would certainly agree. The 45th U.S. president insists he's much the same character now as he was when he was in junior school. According to Trump Revealed, a new biography compiled by Washington Post journalists who spoke to dozens of people who knew Trump as a child, he's not wrong. The psychological resemblance is uncanny, and not a little disconcerting. Born in June 1946, Trump was the fourth of five children to Fred Trump, a ruthless Queens builder and property developer, and his Scottish-born wife, Mary, an immigrant who had fled poverty on the Isle of Lewis and met Fred at a dance in New York. Trump has R was a door, authoritarian patriarch who dressed in a jacket and tie even at home. A workaholic, he was already very rich by the time Donald arrived. They lived in a 23-room, red brick mock Georgian mansion in the well-to-do Jamaica Estates neighborhood of Queens. They were the envy of their neighbors with a chauffeur, cook, color television, intercom system and two Cadillacs with consecutive personalized number plates, virtually nobody had one back then but, of course, the showy Trumps had two. Donald, with his 10-speed Italian racing bike and a huge, elaborate model train set, made the local children green with envy. He clearly left an impression on his neighbors, classmates and teachers because so many could remember at least one chilling anecdote about him 60 years later. When a ball bounced into their garden, he threatened to tell his father and the police about those responsible. Dennis Burnham, who lived next door, was a toddler when his mother briefly put him in a playpen in their garden. She returned a few minutes later to find the current U.S. president, then aged five or six, standing at his fence throwing rocks at the little boy. His mother warned Dennis to stay away from the Trumps as they didn't want him beaten up by the family bully. Another local child, Stephen Noctigal, now a 66-year-old doctor, said he never forgot Trump, a loudmouth bully, once jumping off his bike and pummeling another boy. The disturbing image remained in his brain decades later, he said, because it was so unusual and terrifying at that age. Young Donald, whose nicknames at school included Donnie, the trumpet and flat top for the blonde pompadour hairstyle he had even as a child, picked mercilessly on his own little brother, Robert, a quiet and sensitive child. The future property tycoon later liked to boast how he once stole Robert's building blocks and, so pleased with what he built, glued them together so his brother could never use them again. Bullies are usually cowards, but Donald had a gutsy side. Former babysitter Frank Biggs recalls taking the five-year-old to explore a sewer pipe that was being built in the neighborhood. To his amazement, as dusk fell, the child followed him into the darkness without flinching. With his siblings, Donald went to a smart private primary school called Q-Force, where he quickly became notorious for being unruly, going around with a gang of boys who pulled girls' hair and talked during class. He was so headstrong and determined, recalled former teacher Ann Trees. He would sit with his arms folded with this look on his face, I use the word surly, almost daring you to say one thing or another that wouldn't settle with him. It's an image that anyone who saw one of the 2016 Republican presidential debates can easily imagine. Ditto, a former classmate, recalled a boy who would never admit he was wrong, no matter how trivial the subject. He had a reputation for saying anything that came into his head, he added. Trump spent so much time in detention that the punishment was nicknamed DT in his honor. When he was seven, he yanked classmate Sharon Mozzarella's pigtails. She chased him downstairs and smashed him over the head with her metal lunchbox. Trump admits he was a troublemaker at primary school. I like to stir things up and I like to test people, he said years later. It wasn't malicious so much as it was aggressive. Trump bragged for a long time that, aged eight, he almost got expelled for giving his music teacher a black eye because I didn't think he knew anything about music. However, it later emerged he had exaggerated. The teacher, Charles Walker, 
remembered Trump as supremely attention-seeking. Told on his deathbed that Trump was running for president, he reportedly remarked that even at 10, Donnie had been a little st. Trump was more successful at sports than he was in class. He adored baseball and, needless to say, played it aggressively. He loved to hit balls directly at the fielders rather than away from them. A teammate recalled lending Trump his bat once, only to see him do badly and furiously smash it on concrete, cracking it and not bothering to apologize. Trump's home life offers clues to his fierce competitiveness and limited social skills at school. Mustacho Trump SR was a tight-fisted interdisciplinarian who was determined to toughen up his sons so they could follow him into a life as a ruthless, cost-cutting businessman. The children were banned from having pets or calling each other nicknames at home, and were urged to earn pocket money by collecting empty bottles for their deposits. Donald and his brothers needed to be killers in everything they did, he urged. Young Donald and his school pal Peter Brandt, who became a publishing tycoon, found some freedom by sneaking into Manhattan on Saturday mornings and mooching around the big city. West Side Story, the musical about warring gangs, was a Broadway hit at the time and the two boys emulated the hoodlums by buying flick knives in a shop where they normally bought stink bombs and fake vomit. Trump hardly seemed that serious a rebel, but when his authoritarian father discovered his knife collection and the secret Saturday trips, he decided drastic action was needed. In 1959, 13-year-old Donald was packed off to New York Military Academy, a strict Army-style boarding school 70 miles outside the city. Some have speculated that Trump never got over such a harsh banishment by the father he tried so hard to emulate. Off went that hairdo for a crew cut as Trump had to knuckle down to a harsh regime ruled by a drill sergeant who smacked students in the face if they disobeyed him, and punished academic underachievers by making them box each other. Offenses included unpolished shoes, not walking properly and holding hands with a young lady. Years later, that drill sergeant, Theodore Dobias, recalled how Trump just wanted to be first in everything, and he wanted people to know he was first. It was the sort of place where the stacky, athletic and hyper-competitive Trump could thrive, and he did. He loved to compete for medals for best made bed or shiniest shoes, earning a reputation as intensely meticulous, just as his Scottish-born mother had been. Boasting loudly of each of his father's new business successes, he assured other students he would be famous one day. Promoted steadily up the cadet ranks to become a captain, a sort of senior prefect, he loved wielding his authority, although he was famously soft-spoken. He once ordered a cadet to be whacked on the backside with a broomstick for performing a drill badly. On inspection duty, he found an unmade bed and hurled the sheets on the floor. Its incensed owner, Ted Levine, recalls hitting Trump with a broom whereupon furious Donald tried to push him out of a second-floor window before they were separated by other cadets. Trump, Mr. Levine recalls, would threaten to break anyone who defied him, 